I personally find it very embarrassing that when a creator company that I've spoken fairly highly about um, does things like this. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Mandy. You're watching Small Entertainment. And today we are talking about Matilda Durf, Durf Avenue, and some shenanigans that they are dealing with, as well as uh, copyright, IP, a couple of different things involved in that. Now, you might be confused by the intro because I'm fairly certain that though across my 400 videos, I've never actually spoken about Matilda here on this channel. However, I have talked about her company, Derf Avenue, privately in different industry talks and things like that when talking about creator companies and creator founded companies. Because I fully thought for a while that she was one of the few influencers that I could name that I fully thought had made a fairly successful clothing brand. Not a lot of these girly pops can do that, frankly. Clothing is an incredibly difficult industry. There's quite a few creators that have started their own clothing lines and have ended it because there's just too much demand, uh, manufacturing costs, things like that. There's a lot of things that go into a clothing brand. And so the fact that Matilda has been able to make Durf Avenue and that it's continued to do well since launching is fairly impressive. And it, even in niche circles, even, but still. So I'd actually spoken very highly about Durf and Avenue. And so I was surprised when the responses to the backlash started popping up on my for you page because that's typically how this works now is that i don't see the initial video that causes the outrage i see the responses to the outrage now that's how my for you page has started curating itself to me they know that i'm going to start doing deep dives somehow and so it starts sending me like oh yes forget the initial videos that are causing the outrage we're going to show you the responses we're showing you the outrage itself and then you have to piece it all together one by one but before i start talking about dupes let me tell you about the sponsor for today's video. The real deal, the Enigma Wave from Lilo. Lilo is back again, and this time they sent me the new addition to their very popular Enigma line, the Enigma Wave. The Enigma Wave is a triple stimulation sonic massager to hit both erogenous zones, unlocking new levels of satisfaction to bring you the ultimate finish. Normally when I talk about Lilo massagers, I talk about how they are perfect for solo or partner play, but frankly, when you have the Enigma Wave, you do not need a partner. Frankly, they would probably just get in the way. The Enigma Wave offers eight different modes to experience and explore, and the best part is that you complete control over their power settings and they completely vary in intensity. Lilo products typically have Sensonic technology or wave motion technology to give you a different sensory experience, but this has both in one and three different motors to give you a completely new sensory experience. Triple the motors, triple the pleasure. You deserve to try something new. Go ahead and click the link in my description box and get the Enigma Wave from Lilo for yourself. Thank you again to Lilo for sponsoring this video. Who is Matilda Durf? Matilda Durf is a Scandinavian influencer who got very popular for the Scandi style, the clean girl style, all of that. Uh, pretty much a lot, I would say, of the uh, current aesthetics that a lot of like influencers are known for here in the US are probably pulling at least some form of influence from Matilda herself. On Instagram in particular, she currently has 3.1 million followers and I would tell you her TikTok numbers, but she has deleted her TikTok account because of all of this. Never smart in my opinion. So let's start from what Durf Avenue is, Matilda and her style and all of that, and then how that's kind of led into feeding into the current controversy and what's going on. Matilda, like I said, it was kind of known for like clean girl, Scandinavian style, all this stuff. Um, she's got like just a lot of business casual basics. She's got good style and it's a lot of like uh, neutral colors and basics and things like that. Durf Avenue specifically, her company has 622,000 followers on Instagram and it says ethically produced in Portugal, Sweden and Italy, worldwide shipping. Welcome to our world, Durf Ave Angels. And then here is the website specifically. Really cute, uh, lots of clean girl looks and the prices are not cheap uh, for, I put mine in USD, so like trench coat, sand, $296 USD, midnight one shoulder top ash, $116 USD, midnight ash skirt, 107. I believe this would what you would classify as elevated basics specifically. So obviously the quality should reflect in the price. Now I personally have never bought from Durf Avenue, so therefore I cannot specifically speak to the quality of these items. But if you look at Durf Avenue, you know, you are not particularly seeing anything that I don't think you would see anywhere else, okay? You are seeing things that have been recreated for 
years. And then this is just kind of all in one place if you want this type of style, which I think is why a lot of people like Durf Avenue or more specifically, you are buying Durf Avenue because you are a fan of Matilda herself. That is very common in creator and influencer brands. And it's not something to ignore. That's not necessarily a good or bad thing. It's just a reality. People want to support the creator's brands. And that is why half of us are considered, I would say even more than half of us are considered to basically be mini little cult leaders. Hi. Which one do you think is a dupe? This one or this one? I feel like that's a dupe. <laughs> How much do you think it is? It looks like it's about three quid. I can't lie to you. <laughs> I don't look, they don't look good. It's about three quid. And how much do you think this one is? Maybe like 15 pounds. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. This one's 16. This is the dupe. Okay. And then this one is 75 pounds. 75 pounds? Yeah. It to fit like that. Yeah. <laughs> Would you pay 75 pounds? No, no, no. Yeah. So you may not particularly care much that this item has been recreated 40,000 times. You want to buy it from Durf Avenue yourself because you particularly care about Matilda or you like her style or you want to support her. The thing with Durf Avenue is that the items that Matilda is selling under Durf Avenue, and I'm going back and forth between Matilda and Durf Avenue, she owns it. That's not something to ignore, obviously. And some people are trying to say that like Matilda herself is not involved in what's happening. It's her company. Yes, she is. It's her company. She is responsible for that. Anything Amazon does, Bezos does have a say in, you know, to some degree. It might be too far down the line for him to do anything, but it's still his company. You get what I'm saying? Because there are some things we're going to talk about and like literally the email, the messages say like, Matilda is not involved in this. It's like, it's her company. Yes, it reflects on her. That's how this works. But basically, Derp Avenue were selling items that were basically their version of things that Matilda had been using in outfits and styles and things for years and then they made their own versions don't get me wrong i love matilda jerf i love scandinavian fashion but her brand has always confused me because it is so directly correlated with designer labels the comparison between her items and the designer items are easily found she basically makes a polyester version of a designer item and still sells it for a significant amount of money like her stuff is pretty expensive for what it is these are not pure silk pants it says they're made of a silky material and it just says the fabric listed as turkey this is a trench coat that she is seen wearing a lot but then the trench that's posted that she sells is literally a different jacket. And I do feel bad that people are stealing her designs. That is a really sad thing, but I think that people are doing it because they need a better price point. And she's also copying the designer of the items, but not setting a reasonable price point. Now, making a dupe of something is not illegal. Making a copy of something is not good, okay? And I previously, years ago, back in 2020, when I was still living in my dad's place, so this is forever ago, I did a video on how some influencers were being sued, but they were being sued for promoting fake luxury goods that were being sold falsely through Amazon, through some, you know, shenanigans, okay? Basically, they were advertising, you buy this item and then this is what you get. It wasn't even like they were promoting dupes, they were actively promoting fake items and they were caught and they were being sued for doing that. They were engaging in fraud and promoting fraud and getting a kickback for that and that was actively not okay. That is one thing. Dupes are another thing. Dupes are not illegal. You see this a lot in specifically makeup products where it is like, let's say the same shade, but a whole different brand that sells at a cheaper uh, version. Like for example, Elf does a lot of uh, dupes for different products and things like that. A bunch of companies do dupes. H&M, Zara, all of that, a lot of them do dupes, okay? It's not ideal, but it's something that happens. The dupe in and of itself is not a problem. For her to make her own versions of popular items is not a problem. It becomes a problem when you look at what's happening now. <laughs> and someone promoting a dupe for whatever reason, like I could say, oh, hey, I bought this top. This top is from Anthropology, okay? I bought it forever ago. It's cute on me, okay? But it, the, do I think the price is worth it? Frankly, no, I'm shocked I bought it at the price I was. Me being like, oh, hey guys, this is the item I'm wearing, but if you can't afford this one, or if you don't want to pay this price, that's a little too much because we're all in different tax brackets. The world is on fire. I make weird money, okay, because I'm a YouTuber, and I can be like, oh, but here are a couple other options that are at different price points. You know, that's not out of the norm for a lot of content creators, a lot of influencers, fashion girly pops do this all the time. That's not a problem. Now, I personally don't like buying most clothing items, if any clothing items from Amazon, just because I don't like 
literally any of the quality that I've gotten from Amazon items, frankly. Um, and so even dupes on Amazon, I don't, I'm not, I'm just not a big fan, frankly. Okay. Overall, that's my personal view. I'm able to afford to not do that. So I prefer to not do that. If that's your options, that's fine too. Now it's my understanding and I'm not super familiar with, you know, licensing and patent law and all of that. So keep everything I'm about to say with a grain of salt, but it's my understanding that you cannot patent any patterns or anything like that. Okay. Patterns as in like the garment pieces, like this was made off of a pattern or a knit machine or whatever, but like how this item is put together is a pattern to some degree. The actual design make of the item cannot be patented is my understanding. However, patterns as in like a, like, let's say the newspaper dress that is popular all over the place. Okay. You can patent and copy trademark, copyright, whatever it is, that actual pattern itself. So that if let's say Fashion Nova copies you, the, an item that was just on the runway at New York Fashion Week, you can in fact go after them for stealing that actual pattern of say that same text and all of that. If you have that patented, copyrighted. I'm mixing up words I know, so someone's gonna get mad at me. That is something that you can actually copyright. The pajamas are the ones that I heard the most about, okay? There's one pajamas, I believe it was the Go Slow Summer Berries. Basically, a bunch of berries on the pajamas. It's like strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, you know, berries. Berries and cream, if you will, okay? And they are pretty popular, okay? Uh, they look cozy, I will give you that. I love these pajamas, okay? Don't get me wrong, but how the heck do you guys do anything with these sleeves? Like, I'm trying to wash my face, and I don't know if it's just me, but like, I cannot get my arms wet when I wash my sleeves, so I literally have to go into full, like, muscle shirt mode, and they get in everything. I'm like, I, I'm a bird. Like, I feel like I have wings. <laughs> now, that pattern allegedly was the problem here. There was a few other items that were being copyrighted, but the pajamas were the main ones that I was hearing about. And a few of the examples I'm going to show were specifically talking about the pajamas. Apparently, Durf Avenue is having a problem now with the dupes of their items. Instead of going after the companies, the listings, the sellers of the items being copyrighted, they're going after the TikTokers talking about the dupes. And in some instances, hitting them with copyright infringement violations for talking about these dupes. Do you see why I'm talking about this? That's one, why? Two, never a good idea. I think Mr. Beast put it the best. The thing with a lot of companies is that you can remove the CEO. You can put in different CEOs. You can do a variety of different people on a board, whatever. The company itself could feasibly keep running, okay? The thing with creator and influencer-based businesses is once you take out that creator, the entire company becomes useless, basically. If the public opinion, if there's a bunch of issues, whatever, the moment people turn on that creator, that is where that company kind of starts to crumble. It's not like the top of the pyramid, it's upside down. The one person is at the bottom. If they're gone, the thing's coming down. And you can have whatever opinions you want on this, but that means that any creator run company where they are the face of it, or it exists solely because of them, you need to be extra aware <laughs> of how your actions could reflect on that creator, not just on the company. I've never seen a brand like take down videos of people like talking about dupes or fakes or whatever. I've always seen them just like go after the individual sellers who are selling them. So this was not within like common practice. So I have no idea why they chose to take this route versus just like going off the sellers and then telling the people to take their videos down and then moving on. And that's another thing like, all those videos, like both talking about the real pajamas and the fake pajamas, like that's all free promotion. Like the people who were saying like the, oh, like these are the dupes off Amazon, they were still talking about the real pajamas in their videos. So it's like either way you're getting promotion on your pajamas and just on your business in general. As far as I can tell right now, Matilda has not herself said anything publicly about this aside from deleting her TikTok. Maybe by the time this goes out, that will have changed. But at this point in time, there's nothing on her Instagram or anything that I can see. But basically they started copyright striking. Last week I posted this video of my Dejure Avenue pajamas that I got from DeserveAvenue.com. You can read this, but I was basically saying that even though I love an Amazon dupe, get the real deal Deserve Avenue pajamas. They're so battery soft. I was hyping up these pajamas, $120 pajamas. You can imagine my surprise when I woke up to this message. I had seen the videos where creators were upset that Deserve Avenue was having their content removed because of copyright claims. Deserve Avenue 
immediately started backtracking. They had said in their statement, the reason the videos were getting removed was because of their IP firm and they've asked them to stop removing videos. They just wanna like reach out to the creators directly and discuss things with them, which is what this message is saying. Um, You didn't even watch my video. There's nothing to discuss here. I was backing your brand. It's a mistake on my part. If your company values are strong, people are still gonna buy from you instead of from the mass market for a cheaper price. That's what I did, but now I regret it. Basically over the last week or so, several TikTok girls have said, why did I get a copyright strike or a copyright infringement flag on TikTok for a video about Dirt Avenue, okay? Now, I believe that that last video I mentioned is the only one who was actually promoting like Jerf Avenue itself. I don't know if they searched the word dupe or what, but she even spelt it weird. So like, who knows? Maybe they were just copywriting anyone who was promoting it or mentioned the word Amazon. It seems like they were going after a variety of people. Now, like I said, patterns can be copyrighted. It is appearing that even the pajama pattern of the berries, that that is not something that they have properly copyrighted or own. Allegedly. So even if they were like, oh, hey, that pattern is ours, we're dealing with that. That's, you can't promote these items. That's what they're stealing. If you don't own it, I don't think you can just claim that it's yours if you haven't actually filed the proper patents and paperwork and all of that, okay? Frankly, that's my understanding. But people were talking about this. They were like, I can't believe she's doing this. I can't believe Durf Avenue is doing this. When Durf Avenue is literally a company based on dupes of other items. Now, again, the company itself being based on dupes is not the problem. It's the problem in conjunction with going after people talking about dupes of the company itself. So this was posted the Derp Avenue story. Uh, it's now gone at the time you're recording this. Unfortunately, there has been a recent surge in websites selling products with our design and owned prints artwork, claiming they own those prints. In light of this and to safeguard our prints and the individual print designers, we have an an external intellectual property firm, IP, monitoring copyright infringements. However, we realize that this has inadvertently impacted individual accounts. We have promptly instructed our IP firm to halt reports from individual accounts and focus on third-party sellers of these items. Instead of reporting the individual accounts, we will reach out to the responsible party behind the accounts when we see suspicious pirate copies and have a dialogue with the content creator. Note that the social media platforms themselves could still remove and report videos that are in violation with infringement properties. Why are you reporting videos to begin with? And some people are sharing some of the messages that they got from Darth Avenue once they were like being reached out to once their video was copyrighted or whatever, or struck. And it's like, Matilda's not involved in this, that type of thing and some of the wording. And again, I don't think it really matters if she is directly saying like, hey, we hired this IP firm or not. It's her company and that's just kind of the nature of how this all works. Is it fair? Is it fair to the entirety of the people working at Durf Avenue that Matilda is always gonna be the face of it? No, but that's just kind of how these businesses run. Any business, the, the, the owner, the founder, whatever you wanna call her, is the one that is in charge of everything at the end of the day, even if you delegate, that still falls on you. Some people said that, again, there's no way that this is like the IP firm reaching out to these people. Copyright striking videos, I don't get it. That sounds like a collab thing. Do you guys remember collab DRM? They still exist. They still do this, just not so much anymore. But basically this was a big thing in the 2014, 2016, 2018 time zones of YouTube where anyone who posted any form of a clip of a creator was their video was immediately copyrighted and the then collab would like send their that a check to the creator. Okay, I know a few people who still work with collab and get a uh, check sent to them every once in a while. And it's like the only way that they're able to make money from their TikToks and things like that being repurposed onto YouTube. It's my understanding that they will copyright literally anything. And that's where I would think like maybe this is collab or something like that. Not saying that collab is directly involved. There's been no indication that collab is involved, but that style of just going after specifically the content creators for the IP issues is shocking to me because even then it's like, they're not doing anything. You can say, hey, this is a dupe of that. If you wanna buy that, buy that. That's not illegal. That's not, you can argue they're promoting the copyright infringement, but you can't own the actual designs themselves. Again, the pattern is the thing, which is why the pajamas are the main thing people are talking about. They're saying pattern makers, design, uh, 
artists and all of that. They're the ones that probably own it. So, but then it's like, mm, I don't know. I think the artists have to go after it at that point, don't they? I previously talked about a creator whose uh, photos were stolen and put on artwork. And it's like, okay, there are photos of her, but she had hired a photographer to take them. And so it's like the artist, actually the photographer is the one that actually ended up having to go after the brand because she could not, because it was not technically her photos. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of the same thing where it's like the person who made the artist, a, a lawyer on TikTok asked, she's like, I have not seen any form of a legal letter being sent to anyone. Do we even know that this IP firm, IP firm actually exists? Because even the messages that people are getting from Derp Avenue, they're coming from Derp Avenue team. And this lawyer was like, lawyers sign their names. Like lawyers would put their names. It wouldn't just be like the legal team. You know, that's ridiculous. It sounds a little, a little questionable. I'm really hesitant about making this. I needed to rant because I'm just feeling like so frustrated about the Derp Avenue situation and like, their lack of communication. The Avenue DM me about it. This is basically the generic DM that they sent everyone, which I get, that's fine. This is basically, how do I make myself smaller? This is basically what I responded and I was just frustrated about the situation. So this is what they answered, which is fine. I just kind of felt like it wasn't apologetic at all. They did at the bottom agree that like my videos shouldn't have been taken down. Since we were having such an open conversation about it, I basically said how I felt and how I felt that it was like upsetting that they weren't taking accountability. And then I just was like, can you just take the trademark off my video? And then I got left on scene and I just was like, if you guys are posting stories about it and this is such a big deal and you guys are so wanting to fix it, why not actually answer? So I DM'd again and was like, I got this email from TikTok. Here's the email from TikTok, basically saying it's their final decision on the matter. Confused because Jerf Avenue said they would fix it with TikTok. They put that little like uh, statement on their story. And then they asked me what my handle is, like as if we weren't having a whole conversation and as if my handle isn't the handle that they're chatting with. I go to TikTok and they ask for my email and I feel like I'm on a goose chase, like Instagram, they won't talk to me. So then they say they'll talk to me on TikTok and then they say they're going to email me. I never get an email. Two days later. I'm just feeling frustrated because with their story, they felt so apologetic and Someone who was a long-term fan, if this was handled correctly, like I would forgive, I would forget, I would delete the video. It didn't just happen to me, this happened to a number of small creators and I think for small creators, it's hard to like start from scratch again. So say our accounts got banned from this trademark situation, it's just upsetting because all the work that you put into it kind of just disappears. I'm assuming you're trying to give a runaround because then it's harder to get information. But like, if you think no one's screenshotting every single message that is sent back and forth, like, I just don't know what to tell you because people can delete their own messages. I believe on Instagram, but I don't think you can unsend anything on TikTok. I'm not familiar with their messaging system all that much. An email is the safest option in my opinion, because that's like a digital timestamp. That's pretty solid. Um, so I mean, for them as a company, you would think email would be the go-to more than anything. Like, hey, please reach out to us via email. That I totally understand. But some people are literally showing like the runaround they are getting from the Dirt Avenue accounts. Weird. Dupes are legal and openly marketed as alternative options to the original products, often at a lower price. They are intended to provide a similar experience or aesthetic appeal at an affordable price. And this is from BocoIP.com. Counterfeits are unauthorized replicas or copies of branded products, which are produced with the intent to deceive consumers into believing they are purchasing genuine items. So again, a dupe is totally legal. Again, to go after them, I just think it's I think it's so risky. And I think she should fire whoever was like, let's hire this IP firm to do this. Fire them immediately. Stop working with them immediately. Like you can rescind those. You, the, the I don't know how it works specifically. Well, actually, I do know how it works because I tried to copyright someone uh, who straight up just ripped one of my YouTube videos and you, TikTok was frankly no help. But the fact that these are actually going on to the accounts you should be able to rescind that, hey, I'm working on it, letting you know when this will be ripped off. You know, is it gonna be right away? No, there's probably a process. But like the person who has started the claim, the you are promoting copyrighted material, you are you have copyrighted material, you have engaged in copyright, la 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 la, all of that. You should be able to yoink that off that account. You should be able to reach out and say, I apologize, we were mistaken, let's remove this, this, and this, or whatever. Something like that should be done and it should be done with a swiftness, okay? Your new name should be Matilda Swift, okay? By the end of this, okay? Derf Swift Avenue, Swift Avenue. With how quick you should do that and then you make a public statement, hey, sorry, the end, goodbye. That's just the smartest thing you possibly can do at this point because again, once your audience base as an influencer turns on you, that is the core of your audience base for your company and that becomes a massive problem. Your priority number one should be getting people back on your good side. Now, again, it doesn't matter that people are being like, Matilda's not involved in this decision. 
it's her company. It doesn't matter and it doesn't look good. We'll see what ends up happening with this. This is still unfolding as I am talking to you right now. Maybe by the time I'm editing this, there will be more information or more people coming out. Let's see if they turned off comments. Comments are on. When is Matilda gonna address everything you addressed on your IG story this past week about reporting influencers, owning prints that you don't even legally have the right to own, copying other brands, overpricing basic pieces like white t-shirts and blazers, and how about not paying the DA angels for walking in her fashion show? Be astronomically for real. Oh yeah, allegedly they just did the Durf Avenue angels. Um, they allegedly did not pay any of the models and did not tell them until they were like literally about to walk the show after they had already been at rehearsals and been there all day. And so it's like, okay, well I can't walk off now because I'm here type of thing. So allegedly, models were not paid, which frankly, I am not a fan of to begin with, but at the very least you should tell them before they are literally locked into the show. Oh, people are commenting how um, almost every single comment on certain Derp Avenue posts have responses from Derp Avenue themselves, but of course not the one talking about going after small creators. Your priority number one should be removing the, uh, the claims from creators, okay? You can reach out to them all you want. Hey, we would appreciate if you don't promote these dupes and that type of thing for specifically Derp Avenue products. Now, do I think that doing that is a good idea ever? No, okay, but it's better than just copyright claiming someone, okay, or getting them for infringement or whatever it is, okay? I think that that should always be the last resort, okay? But reaching out to them, it's like, hey, bestie, you know, we would prefer if you didn't, you know, we'll send you a discount code. I don't know, bribery, do that, something else. Remove the claims. Public statement from Matilda herself. Maybe reinstate the TikTok. That's really gonna be it. Um, I'm sure I will have to make an edit because this is still unfolding. Hopefully they make a statement before my video is done, uh, but we shall see. Did you get a strike from Derp Avenue? Have you ever bought Derp Avenue? Have you ever bought a dupe of Derp Avenue? Did you ever see any of these videos? Have you seen any more of this? What do you think about how I tried to explain dupes versus counterfeits, things like that. Let me know, comment down below. Reminder of a podcast as well, Shannon's podcast reminder that uh, Swell Entertainment is now available on Spotify. This episode will be available tomorrow. Reminder that I am now streaming on Twitch under the name Swell Entertainment. You can go check it out down below. Reminder, I also have merch. This end roll is getting really long. <laughs> Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you also explore on Patreon, that list is up below. If you'd like to follow me on my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's coming to have a lovely day. Goodbye. I had a desk chair that was supposed to come and then Amazon decided to cancel my delivery. So instead I have to stand for the time being. We're, it's a work in progress. We're working on it.